You won't have to look too hard to find internet postings telling you how great their ancient Greek coins are, but this video is just a bit different. Here you will meet coins notable mostly for their faults. Collectors of perfect coins will not find interest here. In truth, very few ancient coins are anything approaching perfect. Most were imperfectly struck individually by hand from imperfect dies. After serving time circulating as money, most were lost or buried in the ground where they suffered corrosion before being found a few thousand years later and subjected to cleaning by people with varying levels of skill. It's a wonder they exist at all, let alone being in perfect condition. The examples here represent a variety of imperfections commonly found in ancient coins. They are not the best, they are not the worst. They are, however, in my opinion, more interesting because of, not in spite of, these imperfections. Let's look at each one separately and see what faults we find. This silver tetradram of 5th century BC Athens has suffered three deep cuts with a chisel or knife. Many coins of this type bear these test cuts, checking to be sure the coin was solid silver and not plated with silver skin over a copper core. Most are seen with only one cut, but there was something about this one that made someone triply suspicious. While test cut coins always sell for less and are reduced in demand, I find as many as three cuts adds back some desirability as a collectible item. This coin also shows more wear from circulation than many Athenian owls. The tetradram was a lot of money in its day, and at least a week's pay for an unskilled laborer. Many were stored in large groups in pots and never got as worn as this one. Collectors prefer coins unworn and uncut, but I'm happy to have this one. What were the test cuts trying to find? Another owl tetradram shows us two, but the larger one on the body of the owl broke through to a copper core. The first down by the tail shows a tiny speck of copper, so the second cut was applied with more vigor success, or failure if you were the owner of the coin being tested. A third Athenian tetradram from a later period that collectors call New Style was also exposed by a test cut, but the tester followed up by snapping the coin in half. This made a very faulty coin according to collector standards, but a very educational one for students. This composite photo shows the structure of the silver over copper plated coin, often termed foray by collectors. This coin may not be beautiful perfection in a standard sense, but it allows looking at its characteristics in a very educational way. Moving on to another small coin, but still several times the size of the last one, we see a silver trihemi oval of Corinth from the 5th century BC. Small coins of good silver from this period often show a reticulated pattern where crystalline columns of silver have formed. Such coins can be more easily broken, but some of us consider them attractive and interesting. This silver siglos of the Persian Empire dates to approximately 450 to 350 BC. It does not show severe faults that would qualify it for this video. The reverse is blank as it was made with a rough punch that pressed the oval flan into the design on the obverse. It is shown here only to give reference for the next coin. Another specimen of the same coin is a real mess. The striker placed the oval flan crosswise on the die rather than vertically as normal. 
This oddity may have drawn extra attention to the coin by merchants and bankers. These sigloi often bear what we term banker's marks, showing the coin was found satisfactory by some authority. But this one has eight such marks and three deep punches on the reverse. The coin was not plated. It was just odd. Of the marks, the most interesting is a small owl on the left edge. Not all collectors find countermarks appealing, but this one gains considerable appeal from its many faults. Another feature of countermarks is illustrated by this silver stator of Aspendos. Before we look at the countermark on the reverse, let's check the spot on the obverse that was flattened when the countermark was applied. While collectors vary on how they feel about countermarks, very few like to see detail lost on the other side. Here we are fortunate that the flattened area fell behind the right wrestler rather than on top of their heads or some other important area. Looking at the reverse, one gets the idea that the person who applied the countermark was sensitive to such matters. The coin was struck with the reverse off-center to the right, so there was a large blank area on the left just begging for the countermark. Even those who don't like countermarks would have to agree that this placement was minimally destructive. Zooming in on the countermark, we see a bold strike of a bull sacred to the god Baal, whose name appears in Aramaic at the top of the mark. This is a fine strike of a great countermark, but even it has faults for the picky collector. The mark was placed across the dotted border of the coin and not struck hard enough to erase the dots completely. What we have here is a fault on a fault, but both faults can be seen to add interest to a coin that offset to at least some degree the imperfections. Another off-centered coin was not so lucky as to have a countermark to fill the dead space. This silver hemi-oval or 124th stator of Tarsus weighs only about one-third gram, but was struck so hard that the flan spread to 8 by 10 millimeters, which is quite large for this coin. Ancient coins were not struck with collars that guarantee round and consistent diameter coins. Unfortunately, neither side is well-centered, and the extra heavy strike that gave us excellent detail also produced a thin flan with severe cracks. With ancient coins, perfection is rare, and conditions that sound good, like a bold strike, can come with a downside, like these cracks. We must decide whether the positives offset the negatives. The faults on this 5th century silver stator of Sicyon in the Peloponnesus are less obvious but more disturbing to most collectors. Faintly under the chimera and heavily on the dove, someone scratched the Greek letter phi. My assumption is at some time the coin belonged to Philip or Pheidippides or some other Greek with that initial. I like to think that the graffiti were applied in ancient times but that really cannot be proven. The coin also has another common fault. It has been cleaned recently enough that it has not retoned to a proper look for an ancient coin. All ancient coins have been cleaned. Some were cleaned well and many years ago. Some were made shiny. This coin will look better in a hundred years, but the fives will remain. Ancient bronze coins that once shone like a copper penny often take on colorful surface patina. Green is the most common color. This tetras of Akragas has a green with a splash of red appropriately positioned on the eagle devouring a rabbit. Most collectors consider colorful patina as a bonus rather than just corrosion, but most prefer a nice even color without such bloody overtones. Fault? Bonus? It's all a matter of opinion.
Greek coins were struck from beautifully engraved dies. These miniature works of art could fail suddenly as seen on the reverse of this silver tetradram of Syracuse. A crack developed behind the head of Arethusa, which led to a piece falling out of the die, leaving a cud, or raised lump of metal on the coin. While engravers worked on a replacement die, the striking team continued to use the old disintegrating one, which worsened as time passed. While most certainly faulty, this adds two points of interest to the coin. First, we have the matter of the die failure itself. To me, most interesting is the way the strikers held the die at a tilted angle, so the front of the face on the right side received a stronger strike than the broken area on the left. Did this action enable the die to remain in service longer? Of course, this uneven strike also affected the other side of the coin, making the chariot scene somewhat ugly. Coins from this die can be placed in order of striking as the faulty area enlarged. Hundreds of dies were used to make this type coin. Does a coin made from this die have more interest or no appeal whatsoever? Again, we have a matter of opinion. Several Greek cities in what is now southern Italy issued coins that may appear to have a fault, but in reality are just the way they were made. This silver one-third nomos of Metapontium shows a raised ear of grain on the obverse, and the same thing in Cus on the reverse. This is a perfectly normal situation and often credited to the ideas of the Pythagoreans who were active in the area at the end of the 6th century BC when the coins were made. This technique makes the coin look like an error known as a brockage, where the inku side was produced by being struck by a coin that stuck in the die from a previous use. While not a brockage, this coin is faulty in another way. The reverse was struck twice with a small shift in position between the two strikes. As a result, the grain has two central ribs between the flanking rows of kernels instead of a single one as shown on the obverse. This bold double strike is very easy to overlook. Another coin of the Incus Reverse series is this Nomus of Sybaris, showing a bull on each side. Like the previous coin, this is a double strike, but the first was very off-center and weak. The strikers then repositioned the flan and produced a normal coin except for a few dark creases that show on both sides. Like the previous coin, this coin is not a brockage error. At this point, I should show you a faulty Greek coin with the brockage error, but alas, I do not have one. Brockages are common in Roman coins, but not so in Greek. Perhaps this is a sign of how much faster the mint workers had to work in later periods. This video has been assembled from a series of still photos of coins. Perhaps it could have been done using actual videos. The fact is, I am a complete beginner at making moving pictures of still coins. Only some really benefit from the added dimension of motion. I feel this Sybaris is one that does. Perhaps this video will be followed by other categories of faulty ancient coins, and perhaps some of these will demand motion. Thank you for viewing my samples of faulty ancient coins from the Greek city-states. All ancient coins were individually made by hand without the help of modern machinery. As a result, each one is a little bit different from its peers in some ways. Some of these differences might be classified as faults by those who seek perfect coins. On the other hand, some of us find interest and beauty in these differences. Next up, faulty Roman coins.